Can you guys hear me? Good, good. So, we're going to do a sword drill again. Also, like I said, it, if you come up to me and just like memory verse anything that we've been talking about this whole week, any verse, even the Che He verse on the back of your shirts, um, you can get candy. And I, I don't want you guys to like get like AP, like just grab, just go in there and just grab a fistful. There's so much. I don't need it back at my house. So, you know, you guys get up there, get a candy today, just, just fistful of it and just go back to your <laughs> table. Anyway, um, we're gonna do sword drill again. You guys remember what sword drill is? Up, up, it goes, so like this, all the way up, full extension. All right, and I'm gonna recap while you guys have your whole hand up. I'm gonna recap what we've talked about so far. Don't put it down. Don't put, don't put it down, all right? You, if you put it down, you'll probably really die or something. So, Monday, we talked about what? What did we talk about on Monday? What Psalm did we talk about? Psalm two? Great, and then uh, Psalm two, we talked about Trusting and abiding in the Lord. Full extension, all the way up, all the way up. Don't let it drop. Don't let it drop. We talked about trusting and abiding in the Lord. And yesterday, what did we talk about on Tuesday? Does anyone remember? Psalm 19. And we talked about abiding in God's word so that we can abide in God. Full extension, all the way up. Don't, don't let it dip. Don't let it dip. This is your exercise for this morning. So today... We're going to be, no, no, not forward, not for, no, up, up. All right, here we go. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Psalm 23, all right? So that's going to be our sword drill, full extension. Sir, your Bible's open. This is unacceptable. This is not, what, right there. Yeah, white shirt. I see you. There it is. Thank you. By the spine, close it. It takes all of your muscles, I know. Here we go. Psalm 23, go. Once you get it, run up to the mic and uh, start saying it. All right. Go ahead. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. What's your name? Naomi. Naomi? Great job, Naomi. You can have some candy. And <clears throat> the effort, I mean, that was a fantastic effort from you guys. So you guys who ran up, you guys can go get some candy. You, the three of you, the other three of you who ran up, go ahead. Just grab a fistful again. It's fine. Your leaders are going to hate me later, but that's okay. And your teachers. But Psalm 23. Um, guys, can you think of something? Like one thing that you really, really want. Like really want. It could be anything. It's kind of like yesterday. Something that like really satisfying. What, what are some of those things? What, what's something that you really want? I saw a hand over there first. Yeah. A dog. Yeah, go for it. Oh, Jesus' return. Come back, yes. A metronome. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. Wiz and what did you say? Oh, your dogs would be potty trained. And what was the, what was uh, back there again? Wisdom. Wisdom. Ah, yes. To be a better Christian. To be a better Christian. Another bookshelf and a space to put it. Another bookshelf and a place to put that bookshelf. I wish I could be a better violinist. A better violinist, yes. What was that? Infinite ramen. Wow. All right. I'll, I will allow it. A golf cart. They're pretty cool. A McDonald's Sprite. 
a McDonald's Sprite. It's, and it's got to have the good burn. You know what I mean? Like when you drink a soda, it needs to have a really good burn going down. A hat? Oh, a cat. I was like, a hat's really easy to get. I What? I I have no idea how to answer that. Okay. I don't want to drink styrofoam though. Oh, okay. Bubble tea. All right. We got some I'll take one more. Go for it. A snake. A lot of you guys, oh, there's some hands over there. What do you, you, way back there, what do you got? A thousand cats. That's a lot of kitty litter. All right, go, yeah, go for it. Shh, what? The end of the world. This got really dark really fast. I will take the little girl in the pink. I don't know what you said, but you're really cute, so whatever she wants, get her whatever it is. Oh. So, Psalm 23. Let's get back to it. Psalm 23. Guys, all of this stuff, all the things that you want, I'm going to tell you a secret. It kills us. If it's not rooted and founded in God, if, we, if we're not abiding in God, it kills us. And David knew this. David knew this truly. Now this psalm is probably, I think, one of the most famous psalms in all the Bible. I mean, people, people know this psalm. Like, you guys could probably at least recite the first two verses, right? I don't know why it keeps going out. You, you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's try it. What's, how's the beginning of the psalm go? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He leads me beside still waters. My cup over. Yeah, he, yes, yes. So, he, yeah, for his namesake. It, and it keeps going. That's really easy, but that's usually where it stops, I think. A lot of people like to have it on their... I call it a coffee cup song, you know? You know, you go to the store, you go to like a thrift store and you see this verse on the side of a cup and you're like, oh, that's real nice. It's a nice song. Drink your coffee in the morning. But much like Psalm 42, it's quaint and nice, but it's much deeper. Psalm 23 is in the backdrop of the face of death. It's the, it's the face of death. Like David is going, he's facing Saul. Saul's trying to kill David. And he's in caves and he's even hiding with the Philistines and all this stuff is happening. And, and David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This psalm teaches a very simple truth. And that is abide in the shepherd and you will have Zero wants. Abide in the shepherd and you will have zero wants. Meaning that when we come to know Jesus, we, could, we have everything we could possibly want. Because there, everything that we want is found in Him. We read it here that life with God means we have no lack. When we read that beginning part of Psalm 23, literally, without lack, zero wants, because all of it is found in God. When we walk with Him, it's like walking in green pastures and, and, and by still waters. But notice, like I said, something David is talking about, this seemingly good life is in terms of deep darkness. When things are difficult for him. 
He is actually talking about the valley of the shadow of death. How can this be? How can life be green pastures? And, and how can we walk beside still waters? When a lot of life and a lot of what we've experienced is deep fear, disappointment, struggles with sin, deep sadness that seems to never end, feelings of loneliness and rejection, disappointment and loss. Well, to understand this psalm, you guys have to understand the fragility of life. How, how, how life is the way that it is. The gravity of it. And I think when we understand the, that kind of reality of what life is, we get to understand this psalm more. And we get to understand all of the Bible more. King David lived in danger almost every day. Facing enemies of all kinds all around him and even with his own armies. He feared for his life. And so he depended on the words of God, like we depend on water or oxygen to breathe and to sustain us so we don't get thirsty. In the psalm, immediately before Psalm 23, just a few verses, he tells us something. Why don't you guys put your Bibles up again? Sword drill. Ooh, here we go. Psalm 22, verse 1, go. Run up here when you got it. Ooh, go for it. Speak in the mic. You guys can get some candy. Go for it. The whole chapter? Just the verse, verse 1. Verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Thank you. Go for it. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's what she said. Hurry up. Everywhere I look, people are trying to kill me. That, like, that is, that's what David's talking about in Psalm chapter 22. And then 23, like he comes in, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Have you guys been to Sight and Sound? My wife and I just went to go see the new show, David. I was crying like a baby the whole time. I'm like, Ugh. Ugh. that was my face. But I think, it, I think this reality of abiding in the shepherd and having zero, zero wants, having no lack, I need to be reminded of it every day. I don't know if you guys notice, I wear almost, I, I do wear, it's not the same exact shirt and not gross. All right. Some of you guys are like, this is the same shirt I've worn since I got here. It's No, like right here, this sole shirt, I have five of these shirts. <laughs> and it's Psalm 23. I, I want to remind myself, it says, I shall not want. This, like, this is the reality for the Christian life. If you abide in the shepherd, if the Lord is your shepherd, zero wants. Even, as David says, when your enemies are trying to kill you. Even then. And then he paints this beautiful and even more uh, just wondrous picture for us. A shepherd walking sheep beside a calm stream or a river. And then leading them to green pastures where they eat and sleep. Sheep are soft and stupid. They are. They're, not, they're unintelligent. They're defenseless animals. It's probably not even an inspiring metaphor, really. I mean, when a terrorist comes to your door, you want a policeman with a gun, not a shepherd with a staff. But isn't that how we view God? Well, all that's happening in the world today, all of our flavor of politics and your, your parents' flavor of politics and, and all of the, your forming ideas about society, culture, and the world, you know, you, you, all of us have a sense of deep, what we feel is deep justice and what we want, and that Jesus is going to come back and going to give us what we want, and he doesn't do that. 
Our Savior does not come, He did not come with a sword, although He will. He comes with a shepherd's staff. That's our God. But David saw everything he needed when he was most vulnerable and most afraid in a good shepherd of defenseless sheep. He saw God. When today may be the last day and everything I have breaks and I lose it and it's destroyed, I can say with confidence, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I want you to understand something. Those aren't just words that we say. Those are, those are words that you begin to learn. Through life, through many things, through many trials and tribulations. Through many victories. Beyond everything I can see right now and, and even into the foreseeable future, all of that is a gift a satisfying gift and he will protect me all the way through that gift though is God himself he is the goodness better than any good we've seen or even heard or tasted Right? We're reminded even by David still running from Saul in Psalm 34 taste and see that the Lord is good Hiding in caves and scared for his life. And even in Psalm 16, he is a shelter safer than any government or laws or enemies in any nation. The promises of our shepherd, of Jesus, flood every dark valley you will ever walk in. His light will re reveal even the darkest points that you will ever walk through in your life. It'll never, and, and it, those promises never end, never waning, never in danger again, but peace that you have a good shepherd. So who is this shepherd? Who do you guys think this shepherd is? I said it a bunch of times. Jesus. He says this in John uh, chapter 10. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And I will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And I am the good shepherd. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That is how God helps us in our darkness. We know that Jesus walk through the ultimate valley. That valley of the shadow of death, the darkness and condemnation and hell that was our fate, the thing that we deserve. The outcome now is that our temporary dark valleys that we know and come to know, despite those things, despite sin and failure, God will bring us to Himself, making us pure so that we can be with Him forever. This is our shepherd. This is your shepherd. This is your king. This is my king. Jesus, born in Bethlehem and crucified in Jerusalem, is, a, is the good shepherd of Psalm 23. He leads us into safe pastures. He walks us beside still waters. He restores the frightened and the broken and the wounded and the lame. He gives life to the dead. He comforts and guides us through valleys. He gives us victory over our enemies who seek to kill and destroy us. And... Let me tell you, you have them now. Friends. This world is your enemy. There is, like I said, there's no neutrality zone. You may feel like, oh, life is good. The world hates us. If you know Jesus, they hate you. 
But Jesus claims the victory. This is what Paul means when he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through, the, through Jesus Christ our Lord. But why does David find hope? Why should you find hope and strength in God? Who's the shepherd? You should find hope in God, the shepherd, because when you abide in him, you have zero lack. Because the caring, gentle companion of weak and defenseless and unintelligible, stupid sheep is also the all-powerful, undefeated veteran of all of history who has claimed victory every single battle he has ever seen, ever. He wins 100% of the time and never loses. He's the conquering lamb of revelation like we talked about on Monday. He who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. This is Jesus. They shall hunger no more, neither the thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's Revelation 7. And in that day, God will finally defeat and destroy every threat that you guys ever face. He will wipe away every tear from your eye. <clears throat> you will not be scared of anything. All fear will tremble before the mighty God, the mighty shepherd. He will be terrifying and overwhelming all adversaries that we ever face. For all who oppose him and all who abuse his children will find the good shepherd. And they will bow down to him. Therefore, weak as we are weak and defenseless sheep. This is the one that we abide in. Abide in the shepherd and you have zero wants. You fear nothing, not even death itself. And we shall be delivered from every dark valley we ever meet. Dear friends, abide in the shepherd. Learn it. Meditate on it. And you will have zero wants. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you. Thank you for this day. I pray that you give us strength to go through our day as we um, just go to our, our lessons and practice together and fellowship with one another as we uh, sing songs um, and as we practice our instruments that you would get all the glory and honor in all of it. Sustain us and strengthen us and rem remind us and help us abide in the Good Shepherd. In your name, amen.